Hi, thanks very much for the opportunity to come and talk today about transforming medicines manufacturing through challenge-led innovation. Uh, it's a really great opportunity for us and great timing in terms of where we are in the process of the spending review uh, and putting together our bid for a challenge around uh, medicines manufacturing. This then is our vision statement for transforming med medicines manufacturing. We're really talking about a concerted investment here to transform manufacturing by 2023. And these are the real headlines that we're looking at. The first thing that we want to do is to develop agile, scalable and flexible platforms. What we've seen over the last six months is that really building monolithic entities that are focused on creating one product in large volumes isn't useful in, in the modern environment. So what we are looking at is a transformation program that really underpins agile, scalable and flex flexible platforms. Additionally to that, we want to be able to contribute to the next net zero challenge um, of establishing carbon neutral supply chains by 2025 but ultimately delivering patient benefit to ensure that through shortened development times, increased productivity and speediness of response, we can respond to future emergencies. The other thing that we want as a goal is to make the UK the best place in the world to manufacture medicines. But we have an additional challenge that I also want to mention today. One of the things that we recognize is the challenge that we have in medicines manufacturing around equality, diversity and inclusion. And that's something that we want to use our challenges in the future to address. So I'd like people to remember that we see our, our challenge activities as a vehicle for being able to address EDI. So why is this needed in the current environment? What we believe is that we've got a real compelling case for change at the moment. Nothing has brought the situation to a head more than the recent pandemic in terms of identifying the need to drive healthcare security for the nation. But also what we're seeing is that not only has this been a humanitarian and medical crisis, it's a crisis of the economy. And one of the things that we know is that medicines manufacturing is one of the most productive sectors of the most productive industry uh, in the UK. And so by creating transformational change in this area, we believe that we can also not only support healthcare security, but also drive the economic regeneration in the UK. Alongside what I mentioned before, addressing the net zero ad agenda, making an impact on equality, diversion and inclusion uh, in the medicines manufacturing sector and also de-risking the technologies that are used uh, in pharma manufacturing. So we really take advantage of frontier technologies like uh, advanced sensors, like artificial intelligence. So there's a real compelling case for change at the moment. Why do we believe we need to put government funding into this? I think what we see is that we have an large problems which need disruptive solutions. These are not the sort of challenges that we see as being things that you address by tinkering around the edges. So they're large scale problems that need disruptive solutions. We don't believe that one company can solve these alone. We also think that this will be risky. It'll be high risk, high reward investments, and we don't expect industry to be very forthcoming in terms of investing in these high risk areas and so we believe that significant industry investment needs to be backed up by government support and then the other thing if we, if we look at this from a national perspective we think it's very unlikely that we can expect multinational companies to support strategic sovereign initiatives unless we incentivize that in some way from the government so that's our belief that we need significant government support and that's also supported by the views uh, that we are getting um, from the government. So why then challenge led industry transformation? So you can look at other types of innovation, that the, the kind of innovation that's done by research councils, the kind of innovation that's funded by the sector teams, but we believe that challenge led 
innovation in a challenge fund can really catalyze industry-led coin base invest investment. The other thing is that what we believe is that we can really incentivize and leverage academic ideas that have an impact on industry. And we can do that in a way that draws on cross council support. So we can look at support for these type of industry led challenges, but we can look across the different councils in UKRI. We also think that we can use this type of innovation to de-risk the adoption of really novel technologies. And we can do that in a way that brings in a more diverse community that can bring together, we talk about a trinity of academia, government and industry, but we also believe that we can bring in other agencies and the SME community to affect that transformation. One of the other things that's possible through a challenge led transformation is that we can look around the geographic aspects of the innovation and the support that we give and use that to enable the leveling up agenda and our ability to distribute R&D investment around what is a very geographically dispersed innovation infrastructure. And finally, all this we believe is completely aligned with driving the government's goal around the life science council goals in medicines manufacturing. So our belief is um, it is still a very worthwhile area to explore challenge led industry transformation. The obvious question then is how does this fit with other funding? And particularly if you call out these three areas here for the ISCF challenge funds, we see four areas where we can see large levels of overlap. Firstly, in data to diagnosis and early detection of disease. So what we hope to be able to do is to establish a process across the country where we can identify the needs of, of patients and then link that into our ability to supply the needs of those patients. We also see links to manufacturing made smarter where we talk about digitalization in industry and we know that we've had some really excellent traction in digitalization of pharma manufacturing. The other area that's maybe a little bit less um, obvious is the audience of the future where we're really seeing very important developments uh, in the use of virtual reality, augmented realities, and a lot of these have been developed in other areas, we see an extraordinary opportunity to be able to use them in areas such as training, such as uh, remote support for manufacturing. So that's another area that we believe is important. And then building on that, the healthy aging challenge, where we're looking at what pharmacological uh, interventions can we make to support an aging population. The other area where we think there's a good synergy is around cross UKRI. And we believe that we've got really good overlap with EPRSC around the manufacturing areas, BBRSC around uh, bioprocessing, but also within UKRI, other proposals around the health agenda. The other area, which is obviously to the fore at the moment and an area that's enormous overlap with us in medicines manufacturing is the COVID and pandemic funding. And we have extremely strong links to the Vaccines Task Force and the Therapeutics Task Force. And clearly we're looking at what our portfolio has achieved in terms of supporting that, but also how that might go on to support the legacy uh, that the Vaccine Task Force wants to leave. So how would we focus the new investment packages that, that we're envisaging to transform medicines manufacturing. Well, one of the things that we clearly want to do is that we want to build on the investments that we've made so far. And I think many of you will have heard me talk about this previously. We have a unique capability in the UK in terms of our medicines manufacturing innovation infrastructure. And so what we want to do is that we want to innovate and fund collaborative R&D that supports our medicines manufacturing innovation infrastructure investments. And we want to do that in a coordinated way as well. So we want to work much more as a network across this innovation infrastructure. So what we want to do is focus our investments and utilize the unique capability that we've got for an innovation infrastructure. 
The idea is then that we fund a number of grand challenges. Um, we're thinking of a number of grand challenges, each of these being a significant investment of the five to 15 million mark, looking at large consortia linked to the centers that we've talked about already as part of our innovation infrastructure, but also engaging with industrial partners, SMEs and academics to address really important challenges over a long period of time. We also would like to fund smaller scale earlier TRL projects to enable more academic engagement and also to leverage other investment mechanisms such as the ones I identified earlier. The other thing is what we would like to do is to look at the enabling activities that are also going on within UKRI, particularly around skills, but also, as I mentioned earlier, around equality, diversion and inclusion. So the kind of areas that we're looking at are well linked into the medicines, manufacturing, technology and innovation roadmap. So building on our innovation infrastructure, as I highlighted earlier, we see a number of potential grand challenges. And I've listed a few here just to give you an idea of the current type of grand challenges that we're addressing around digitalization, continuous manufacturing, advanced therapies, manufacturing. Looking forward, we have ideas for other grand challenges, but I would point out now that these are our ideas based on our discussions with people in industry, academia and government. Part of the process going forward, and this presentation is part of this process, is to start to engage with the community to validate whether these truly are the type of grand challenges that we need to address. The goal then will be that we have a number of grand challenges and underneath those grand challenge programs, we'll have, it, we'll have projects that are at a smaller scale that would feed into them. So for example, here, in terms of robust agile supply chains, we might further invest in projects around continuous manufacturing. In terms of net zero, we might invest in areas such as oligonucleotide manufacturing, which we know is particularly impactful. And so there are various specific projects that we know industry already supports, but we can see those fitting in within a strategic grand challenge. And just to highlight that and the link between the medicines manufacturing industry partner partnership technology and innovation roadmap, what you can see here is some of these ideas mapped out. So if I take as an example, next generation biopharma manufacturing, we see a grand challenge around making a step change and a transformation in the productivity of biopharma manufacturing. Underneath there, what you can see are a number of areas where we think it's worth investment. So what we have then is an overall goal around transforming medicines manufacturing in the UK that's broken down into a number of grand challenges. And you can see as an example here, the type of projects that we would wish to fund as part of that. So that's the structure that we're thinking about. Um, just to confirm, both Sarah and I, who are now job sharing in the role of the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund Director in Medicines Manufacturing, are on the panel later. Uh, and as such, would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have about this presentation.